Hi guys, it's me, Matt Lizard from What Pictures here, and today I want to tell you why it's okay to be sad. Right, are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? I'm not saying that being sad all the time is a good thing, but feeling this emotion from time to time can be quite healthy. It shows our ability to be compassionate to others as well as ourselves. There are going to be times in your life where you're inevitably going to be sad. Whether this is through arguments or through mourning or even through heartbreak, sometimes there isn't a particular reason as to why you're feeling sad. Sometimes you hate the world and you just want to hide away under your duvet for the next week eating Doritos and not contacting the outside world. And I'm not here. Am I? <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, well, that's not a bad thing. Let's do it, shall we? To the research behind it. It is important to understand the difference between depression and sadness, as these things can be mistaken a hell of a lot. So sadness and depression can seem to involve the same brain region, the left prefrontal cortex, but in different ways. So some of the areas of the brain that are involved in ordinary sadness are almost completely shut down when clinically depressed. The left prefrontal cortex is active during sadness, but after months of this continuous emotion, it is known to burn out. In society, we are told to be okay and to not embrace our natural emotions, meaning we hold them back or we deny feeling them at all. Suppressing unpleasant feelings such as sadness, because you either don't like how it feels or you believe that you shouldn't, can have more of a negative impact than accepting that emotion altogether. Failure to cope with sadness imposes a higher stress intake on the body, which can result in autoimmune diseases, heart problems, and a greater tendency towards self-harming behavior. Evidence suggests that sadness can Im impose... Impose on the body's immune system? <laughs> well, it could, by suppressing it, leaving it more vulnerable to autoimmune diseases such as arthritis and multiple sclerosis, according to Site Central website. So coming away from all the bad and scary things about sadness, there's also an upside to this emotion. Lots of them, actually. Sad people are better at facial recognition than people that are in happy or neutral moods. Sadness can also help us recall the past more clearly. It can. It also improves our attention to detail. So even though happiness certainly feels better, it results in a less focused mind state. And this is why sad memories are more clearer because you were paying more attention at that time. So why is it okay? Not only is it okay, but it's good for you. Good for your body. Your body will shut down if it's only powered by positive moods permanently because you're not feeling all of your natural emotions. It is important to make a point of what your body goes through when you're feeling sad. It can help push you to develop ways to cope with this emotion and it may even help you find your way back to a good mood. Your brain and body needs the balance between all your emotions to be healthy. So make sure you sit back and allow yourself to have those moments where you don't want to do anything. However, if you don't find that there are ways of coping that help you, and it is affecting your life and relationships, then go and talk to your doctor to see if there's anything that can help. And we'll leave some links down in the description box below to see if any can help. Just remember that being sad is a natural process that the body goes through. And understanding this will allow you to deal with it a lot better and help you be happy in no time. Thank you for watching this episode. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you liked it even more, then please go around and share it and press that subscribe button. I'm Matt Liz from What Pictures, and that's why it's okay to feel sad. To be sad. Sad. Sadness. It's alright. I'll see you soon. The phobias can range from things that can actually hurt us, such as sharks and snakes, or irrational fears such as balloons and mops. Everybody has some sort of fear. Myself? Why do you keep finding incest stuff? <laughs> I'm not condoning any- why, why? Pearl Carter, a pensioner from Indiana, USA, she has never been happier since she has begun an incestuous-